Welcome back to DCL Talk, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm Pastor Richard Martin. I'm Kyla Martin. And we're in for another helpful conversation. Before we dive in, I must say, at the time of this recording, it is a beautiful day outside. It is a beautiful day. The sunshine is just calling my name. We had a chance just to pull over to the side and look out over the wonderful ocean and feel the sea breeze. Mm-hmm. And the sunshine. And the sunshine. I was about to say, I think <laughs> the sea breeze might have become a little bit much for you. No, not too much. Not just too much. because we had that nice counterbalance with the sun and the breeze. So, you know, it wasn't too much. But yeah, if that sun had tucked away, it might have been a different story. All right. So let me guess. You have some questions for me. You guessed correctly. All right. Let's All right. hear them. Yeah, let's let's go for it. So I just would love it if you could unpack for us how we can overcome a critical spirit. That's an excellent question. And I think it's one that we all could find value in answering because I don't think a critical spirit is confined to one type of person versus another. I think there are certain scenarios that each of us may find ourselves being hypercritical in more than other scenarios. So I just want to lay that as a foundation to say, as we answer this question, it really does apply to all of us. And so the first step to overcoming a critical spirit is to recognize the need for change. Often when we respond with hypercriticism or with the critical spirit, it's because either that's just kind of been a rehearsed response in that particular situation, And our vision, our emotional vision narrows, and we don't really realize you have other options. And so we looked at the story of Judas today, and we saw a slice in his life where he had a very critical response that turned out to be actually very self-interested as opposed to other-centered. And so recognizing the need for change begins with praying this prayer on a daily basis. Lord, I realize that my influence as a Christian man, as a Christian woman, as a Christian boy or, a, or as a Christian girl, is shown in how I treat people. Mm-hmm. So we're not just talking about, oh, you got to overcome a critical spirit because it looks good or it's popular or it's in. No, we really believe that the reach of our influence in terms of our lives as followers of Christ is seen in how we treat people. And very rarely does a critical spirit encourage trust in God or trusting him to change one's life. So you got to recognize the need for it. Then the second step is resolve every day to start with the person in the mirror. We referenced in today's message, Jesus' statement in Matthew chapter 6, where he says, how can you say to someone, hey, you have a speck in your eye or a small piece of sawdust when there's a plank in your eye? Jesus is being hyperbolic. He's exaggerating to stress this idea that often When we're hypercritical, there's some area of our life lives that is unresolved and unaddressed. And in order to make ourselves feel good, we can pump ourselves up over against someone else. So you start with yourself. Lord, here's my heart. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me. And if you find anything in me that's not like you, take it out. Ask the Lord to bring change in your heart so that your prayers for others include what God can do for them. And not just a focus on how you want someone else to change because it makes you feel comfortable. You're starting with yourself. Recognize the need for change and resolve to ask the Lord to begin with you. Mm-hmm. Now, that whole idea of recognizing the need for change can become difficult when we have blind spots. Mm-hmm. And we all have blind spots. So then the question becomes, how do we become aware of those blind spots when we generally can't see them? Yeah, I think that we start to become aware of our blind spots by receiving the loving and upbuilding feedback from others. Um, Every person who has a blind spot needs someone to provide kind, trustworthy feedback. Now, I just want to make a quick point of clarification. We live in what has been called a clapback culture. That is to say, a lot of people may have a lot to say to you about yourself. Some of those observations may have a measure of truth, but the concern and the difference between feedback and clapback has to do with the motives. Normally when someone clapbacks, 
or claps back and says, I'm going to tell you about yourself. Their motive is really to kind of tear the person down or again, to kind of pump themselves up over the other person or maybe to kind of put them in their place. You hear those types of phrases. But feedback has a different motive, especially godly feedback. It's taking into consideration a number of themes. So it's not just saying I'm going to speak the truth for speaking the truth's sake, or I'm just going to say what's on the top of my mind, or even just what I feel. So you want to think about these things as you're trying to process the type of feedback that's coming your way. Godly feedback takes into consideration timing, when I actually say something, the tone in which I am providing this feedback, the context. There's some feedback that doesn't need to be given publicly. To use myself as an example, there, there are things that often will need pastoral response and attention, but not everything and many things would, would not be handled well from the pulpit if I just go into a rant about, hey, we need to do this, we need to take care of that. So context, discerning the difference between public feedback and private feedback. And then before feedback is offered, has it been bathed with prayer? Now you'll begin to become sensitive of those whose feedback is godly as you sense like, okay, this wasn't to tear me down. This was something that might have been difficult to receive because feedback from time to time, I can testify it's not easy to receive. When someone kind of points out your blind spots, especially if you weren't aware of them, it, it can be a little bit difficult to digest. But one of the ideals of being a member of a Christian community is that we grow with one another in fellowship one another. And so if I give people grace, they love me. They don't have my worst interest in mind. And they're not God, so they might not have my best interest in mind. But if they're simply saying, listen, I just want to bring this to your attention. Along the way, I'm going to hear something that's helpful for me. And it may not necessarily feel good initially, or it may feel good because if someone brings something to your attention, it's like, oh man, I wouldn't have seen that if you didn't share it. I think of an example where Jesus is being arrested and Peter takes out his sword and actually cuts off somebody's ear. This was his clapback. I'm responding. And Jesus says, put away your sword for those who live by the sword. Those who live by that type of impulsive defensiveness, they die by the sword. You have to know when to put the sword away. And that was feedback offered at a very tense moment that I think really changed Peter's life. And so the answer to how do we become aware of blind spots? Being open to receiving loving, upbuilding feedback from others. Okay. Has anyone ever helped you to become more aware of your blind spots? Not at all. I don't have blind spots. Mm, I think we need to walk <laughs> through these steps one more time. We need time. to walk through these steps one more time. Oh, yes. There, there have been many people in my journey who have helped me become more aware of my blind spots, including you, my love. Mm. Yes, indeed. Hopefully you felt it was loving and upbuilding. Yes, 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 yes. At the time, I might have been a little defensive. The Lord is working on me. Um, but looking back, I mean, definitely, I think of an example earlier in our marriage where I don't know if we might have had a disagreement or if our timing was off. You know, we were trying to make an appointment and one of us might have been taking more time than the other one of us might have felt like we needed to take or any number of things. You would point out kindly you know, about an expression that I would bear on my face that I wasn't aware of because this is the powerful thing about blind spots and the need for feedback. No one can see themselves. We have been given eyes to see out and others see us and can kind of give us feedback. So you said, well, what's that face? And you remember, I'd always say, what face? I'm not making a face. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what you would say. What face? What face? Nobody's probably ever told while, me I made this a face. Yeah, probably <laughs> while making that same face. Quite. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you would say, okay, well, you're making a face and I don't know how to read it. I don't know how to interpret it. So one day I needed to get a passport picture taken. And on this particular day, um, I had a long day at work, a lot of meetings. It was just kind of a stressful day. And um, I just so happened to receive the Walgreens representative who was like employee of the week. Just chipper and bright, everything helpful. was all aligned. She was very helpful. <laughs> On that particular day, I needed her to tone it down some, but she was all over the place. Oh, no, this is bad lighting. Let's move here. We're going to get you the best picture in the world. And all the while, Kyla is behind her, and she's kind of making a circular motion with her index finger around Kyla's face. Kyla's doing it to her own face, and she's communicating to me. You're saying to me, fix your face. And yeah. I'm like, I'm just trying to help a brother out. Trying to help me out. As she, he sat in front of the lens of the camera and tried to give the, you know, straight face um, passport photo look. Mm -hmm. I said, he ain't going to like it, friends. 
You're not, not gonna like that not, face. He's not gonna like the face, but I tried. I tried to tell him. She tried to tell me. She I was making that him. motion, circular motion, and I'm not getting it, which was kind of annoying me more. I'm like, I'm just trying to take this picture and leave. So the picture was taken. She takes out the SD card, mm-hmm. puts it in the kiosk, and my face comes up, mm. and I said, "Oh no, 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 no! We can't, we can't use this picture." And, and I said, "That's the face." <laughs> You said that right there in the store. You and said, I laughed. That I was like, man, ain't God good? Ain't God Won't good? He, do it? he he made that thing clear. He gave that feedback. You were already giving me feedback. I was giving you feedback. I but wasn't trying to hear it. No, but I had to see my own face. Yeah, to the, see my own face. Yeah, but the you blind didn't see spot my face. was <laughs> illuminated. The blind spot was illuminated, <laughs> and since then, this was probably in the first two years of our marriage. Since mm-hmm. then, because of that helpful feedback, loving. By feedback, the way, mm-hmm. he did get a retake and his passport picture over these past many years has not reflected that moment it hasn't and people have commented on it people have they said this is a nice passport picture when Mm. we travel here and there (laughs) so thank you darling for helping me to see my face you're welcome that's the goal of godly feedback that helps us to become aware of our blind spots not to tear us down not to make us feel horrible but to simply show us a part of ourselves that we may be aware of but may be denying and in many cases are completely unaware of and you need the love of a friend, of a family member to gently and even consistently and patiently say, hey, listen, you know, I just kind of want to give some attention here. And I think we all become the better for it. So takeaways for today. What do we want the people to pray for? Well, we want to encourage everyone to pray for a compassionate spirit and to pray for God's help so that you can give and also receive feedback with grace. Amen. Thank you so much for those wonderful questions. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Likewise, likewise. Always a pleasure. I can't wait to our next DCL Talk conversation. All right, until then. God bless you. Talk to you soon.